Speaker number five is Marsha Yamanaka from Brazil. Marsha, please. I, I don't hear you, Marsha. Are you muted? I'm so sorry. Okay, let me try again, okay? <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Speaker view, skip. No, I want to go back to the beginning. Okay. Thank you. Hello, Toastmasters and guests. Thank you so much for being here and let me talk to you about Brazil. My name is Marcia Yamanaka. I am a Japanese Brazilian American. When I go around talking to people, I always know when foreigners get some things right about Brazil and always most often before the internet, I would hear a lot of things that were commonly wrong about Brazil. So today, I want to share with you my perspective. I was born and raised there. I live half of my life there, mostly my childhood and teenage years. So all I remember about Brazil is good. When you talk about Brazil, you talk about soccer. Soccer is what we are first known for. And it's true, it is in the blood. My father plays soccer every Saturday. My brothers play soccer. And it was not only until I immigrated to this country that I got sick and tired of soccer because it takes too long and nothing happens and there is sudden death. After American football and Tom Brady, you don't go back. Brazil is also known for carnival. And this is one of my bucket list items. I want to be like that. And I want to dance in Rio in that way. And it's true, you can do it. People say that um, the people in the parade uh, save the entire year should be able to afford to pay for the custom and to be able to stay and um, um, play during the carnival. But for foreigners like me now, um, I can do everything online and I just pay more, but I don't need to show up for rehearsal. And for those of you who are as old as I am, Brazil is also known for the Grill of Ipanema. Ipanema is a very famous beach in Rio. And the girl from Ipanema is actually a true person. So this is the before and after picture of the girl from Ipanema. So what did I used to hear that was wrong about Brazil? Here are some of the things. First of all, Brazil capital is not Buenos Aires. Yes, Buenos Aires is in South America, and but it's Argentina's capital. And here's the problem. When you talk about, uh, to a Brazilian about Argentines, it hurts. You know, it's like uh, talking American and British or the Dutch and the Belgians. Uh, so we don't compare. Now, Brazil capital is called Brasilia. Brasilia was a man-made city. The hope was that by building the city in the middle of Brazil, people would immigrate there. And it just didn't happen. So even today, I hear... Uh, that is a place where the politicians work. Uh, 
four days a week, and then they all fly back to their home states. But that is Brasilia, Brazil's capital. We don't speak Spanish, we speak Portuguese. We were a Portuguese colony. Uh, we were discovered in the 1500s by the Portuguese and then all the sugarcane plantation colonization thing started. So we have a monarchy for a long time and we also have a lot of um, Jesuits. We had missions and even today uh, we are mostly a Roman Catholic country. So here's what I want to bring it up since I'm talking about Portuguese. My last name, well, my last name is formally spelled with an I because there is no Y in Portuguese alphabet. But the correct way would be with a Y. So that's how I use it. And there's one more thing. My friends in college used to make fun of me because the way you read my name, I am a Naka. So they keep asking me, what's a Naka? So that's why I don't like to spell my name incorrectly the way it was in Brazil. The third thing is, you don't look Brazilian. Well, here's the thing. Everyone looks Brazilian. Really, if you go to Brazil and you don't open your mouth outside of the airport, nobody can tell you are gringo and you just live by as a Brazilian. We had so many immigration waves in Brazil uh, from the Europeans who colonized the Portuguese, the Italians, the Spaniards, and then later on, the Africans that were brought in as slaves, and they are mostly in the Northeast states because there was where the sugar claim was. And later on, the uh, other wave, including the, um, the Japanese immigration wave, which is where my story starts. So this is between, I think, 18, late 1800s and 1930s because my grandparents immigrated to Brazil from Japan in 1925. And from what I hear, it was a um, cruise ship. This is a copy of a passport um, that I have from then and is um, written in, in French because, again, we had a lot of European influence and it dates 1925, that's how I know. I was born there, my parents were, were born there, so I am not Japanese at all. I am much more Latin than Asian, but I like to think that there are some things that stick with you through heritage. And I hope that I inherit the good traits that are in this uh, culture and that I can learn from the others because it's just through cultural diversity that we grow. So, this is to be continuing story about what happened in Brazil. But in the meantime, since I immigrated, every convention, every Toastmaster convention I go, I try to look for who is holding the Brazilian flag. And last year, no, the, the 2019, the last year of the in-person convention, um, I was on stage with the Brazilian people who got recognized on stage. And yeah, we just like to have them. Thank you, Mr. Um, Connie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Marcia. Fascinating. Boy, we're getting smart today, aren't we? <laughs> Learning so much. <laughs> 